Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining Rates on the Run from Simplify. Today is Wednesday, July 31st of 2024. And just as a reminder, today's show and every show is intended to provide a quick analysis of the Fed's recent policy statements, the current state of the bond market, and actionable investment takeaways. My name is Eric McCardle. Today and every day, I'm joined by Jason England, our managing partner and fixed income strategist. Jason, good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me today, Eric. Absolutely. So let's get right into it. We're right off the back of a Fed presser. And Jason, I just want to ask you, what was the outcome of today's meeting and uh, what are your interpretations of that? Yeah, so not huge expectations for anything today. I think we we realized uh, that they were going to be on hold once again. So now it's eight straight meetings. So they've been on hold for a year. Or so you know that's longer than the the average is usually around eight months that they're on hold after they stop a hiking campaign to the first cut. So I think you know obviously there was the hiccup in the first quarter around inflation, but the second quarter you had a you know somewhat good inflation report for April. May, very good. June, even better. So now you're starting to see the inflation trend back in the direction. So they weren't quite ready here. They want to see a little more data. And the other you know, key pivot that we saw, and you know, Chair Powell stressed it even more today in the press conference, and we saw it, and we'll get to that in a minute, and some of the changes in the language was more around the dual mandate coming into balance. You know, For two years, we're talking inflation, inflation, inflation. Now, you know, it's somewhat, they were, you know, talking about the labor market now. And we did we have seen some significant softening. You know, unemployment rate has gone up not drastically. It's still historically low at four point one percent, but in March it was three point eight percent. So we've seen it drift up, you know, kind of each job report we get, you know, unemployment rates creeping up. So you, you bring that in with the softening labor market and you have a disinflationary trend starting to gain more confidence with the Fed. So now I think you see this is probably the last meeting that isn't live. So throughout the rest of the year, we're going to see three more meetings, September, November, and December. We should look at those at live meetings. Got it. And so with that, and we talked about this dual mandate coming back into effect, a little bit more focus on the labor market and the jobs picture. Were there any new, you know, pieces of information or surprises today, uh, not only in the, the press conference, but also, maybe from the market's reaction to the uh, conference itself. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it, you know, it, it didn't come across, you know, dovish or hawkish either way, kind of right down the middle, because I think they didn't want to telegraph that they were going to do anything in September at this meeting. And I think maybe the market was expecting that. So we, we have seen a little bit of a rally in rates. We've seen, you know, we've seen the, the uh, interest rate probability chart you're bringing up right now where we've seen. You know, for a while now to spend over 100% priced in a, a cut at the September meeting. So I think that, you know, maybe they wanted, you know, maybe people wanted to see more in the in the statement, but there were changes. And I think the changes that were key in the statement around unemployment was, you know, job gains, you know, that now they're starting to tell you that dual mandate, like I said, it's becoming into more balance now where Jobs have moderated um, versus before they said they remain st- strong. And then, you know, the as I mentioned before, the 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 even though the unemployment rate remains low, it's moved up some. So I think that's the key part around the uh, the labor part that they changed. And the other thing is, you know, around their dual mandate. You know, before they they you know they were saying that you know it it was you know coming in towards better balance. And now I think the words they use is continue to move into better balance. So you're starting to see that now where the balance word is being used a lot more. And I think it's starting to be more evenly balanced. If you listen to chair Powell in the press conference and in the language. And then the final thing was the risks, you know, the, the two-sided risks that they look at in their dual mandate. And, you know, before they were saying they were highly attentive to inflation risks. Now they're saying they're more attentive to both sides of the risk. So I think that's the other key takeaway is that you're starting to see now it's not just the inflation picture. So even though inflation's coming down and setting up for them to eventually ease here, I think the the key thing is is now the labor side's going to play in. And unless they see an extreme deterioration, which they don't project right now, I think it's going to be 
managing around both of those. And I think right now they're they're in a pretty good spot. I think Powell seems to think, you know, the market may think differently, but I think they think that, you know, that the the balance is in line a little bit better. And I think they can get to a point now that, you know, fine tuning cuts are probably coming soon um, and approaching, you know, as early as the September meeting. And there may be, you know, maybe multiple cuts, but it, to me, I think it's going to be more gradual around maybe the quarterly cycle um, because it's not like they're doing these because there's an extreme event. The economy is still strong. I think it's just more normalization, and they will do some fine-tuning cuts here soon. Um, obviously, the September's priced in fully. We'll get um, two more CPI prints and two more job reports by then, so we'll see. Maybe that's going to be enough to, to have the Fed move. Yeah, very good. That's a really great recap. So, you know, with that, we always try and bring this together for our audience and really think about, you know, what type of actionable opportunities are out there in the fixed income market. And so with that, Jason, what are some areas uh, in that market that look really interesting right now to you? Yeah. So I think that, you know, the key right now is that yields have been high for a while here, but now we're going to get into an easing cycle. So where can you find value? And I think some of the most attractive areas right now that we see the first one being newly issued mortgage backed securities. Um, I think you're really getting an advantage here where yield, there you go, looking at the chart where yields have really moved out on, or uh, spreads have really widened here historically. So higher yields Um, first, you know, looking at credit or even treasuries, you know, that, that aren't quite as high because, you know, credit spreads have really tightened in over the last year since we had the banking crisis last year. So really you're at a spot right now where these, you know, newly issued um, NVS, you know, coupons between five and 6% are very attractive, very low risk because you have the implicit guarantee from the the government with Fannie, Ginny, or Freddie Mac pools that you can invest in. And the fact that you're getting these spreads that are much wider and you have no credit risk in them, I think that's a huge advantage right now. So I think that's kind of t- uh, area number one that I find very attractive to invest in. Um, low durations also to mention in those in those higher coupons because they do have more prepayment risk. But even if the Fed starts to cut rates, um, like I said, it's probably going to be gradual and it's really just impacting the front end. The back end is going to have some fiscal issues still going on with the uncertainty around the election that will keep back in somewhat elevated. Very good and, and helpful for the audience at home. So appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I, I, and then go ahead. Sorry. Nope. Go ahead. Sorry. I didn't realize you were done. I weren't done. Yeah, no, I have, I have a couple more areas too that I think are really, you know, the, the other one I think is the favoring the two year, obviously with the fed starting to ease the two year is really going to benefit from that. Um, as I mentioned, just in the, you know, just recently about the uh, the the back end probably being a little bit more persistently higher, just because of the uncertainty around the 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 political environment and who would. I don't think it really matters um, who gets elected um, because we have such a large fiscal deficit already. Um, you know, either one of these parties could have policies that that pressure that a little bit, so we may have more treasury issues. So. I really think that you're going to benefit from, you know, whether it's just strictly in the two year or some type of bull steepener, because if the Fed's easing and then you get this back end that stays a little bit more elevated around these fiscal uncertainties, I think you can benefit from that. Uh, and then I guess the final area um, is, you know, I think right now, you know, last couple of years, it's been really beneficial to take advantage of the floating rate notes or floating rate bonds, you know, just because in a rising rate environment. So now it's probably time to start moving to some fixed rate bonds and trying to walk into some of these yields. So, you know, in a, in a nutshell, I think you with an easing cycle, you, you know, you want to walk in some of these higher rates that we hadn't seen for years and, and take advantage of it. So overall, those are kind of the three areas that I think you can benefit in the fixed income market right now and kind of the most attractive. Love it. And I agree on all fronts, um, which is convenient because we're co-hosts. But uh, but really, I, I think those are all really actionable and interesting ideas and great stories for clients too, which is important. So uh, Jason, this was awesome. Thank you for the recap and for the ideas. Uh, for the audience watching or listening at home, please like, subscribe, comment, send us an email at info at simplify.us and let us know what you think. 
Uh, and in addition to that, if you have any questions about the investment themes that we discussed, again, please send us an email, info at simplify.us or visit simplify.us. Jason, until next time, thanks everyone for watching and listening. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.